that. Moderation is only a word that people use to try to balance out what they're doing is bad. Something bad, moderate is still bad. <laughs> you know, because if somebody's overeating or eating way too much and then they come back, that might be moderate for them, but it might still be too much. I believe in temperance. Temperance is self-control. You know, I model my life of what it says in the scripture. The scripture says, it says, absence of all bad things and moderation or temperance of all good things. Not everything in moderation. You know, temperance of all good things and absence of all bad things. That's the way we want to look at it. And so we want to get ourselves on a schedule that we're designed to live by. The design versus the nature, uh, versus, versus the, the customs of today. That's what we want to get on to help you understand this. I'll explain it in my formula for health, as we were talking about earlier. The formula for health is very simple. Power minus obstruction equals vitality. Power minus obstruction equals vitality. This is the formula for health. And what does it mean? It's very simple. It means we are all born with a tremendous amount of power with very little obstruction. In other words, health minus disease equals wellness. We're born with a tremendous amount of power and very little obstruction. These things cannot move in the same direction. And as we get obstruction in our life, it starts to rise and the power begins to diminish. But as, still, as long as we have enough power or energy to get rid of that obstruction, we're going to be in a state of health. But as this continues to happen, and the obstruction rises, the power is diminishing, once that, uh, that obstruction passes the power to get rid of it, we start experiencing the beginning signs of disease. And if we don't do anything about it, it keeps coming back worse and worse and worse. Before you know, we're at the latest stage of disease, and we have no power to get rid of or anything else. Now, this obstruction is all the stress in our life. This obstruction is the stress that's created by food, the stress that's created by trying to do things we don't have control over, the stress that's created by living an unhealthy lifestyle and not sleeping at the right time, the stress that's created by not having my books in your library. All of this stress, <laughs> all of this stress is going to create, create this obstruction to rise and this power to diminish. But no matter where we are, as long as we start eliminating what's causing the problem, this can start to reverse itself. And we can start to bring this energy back and get rid of this, this obstruction. And that's going to determine the state of health we're in. From all my lectures that I do all over, I find the two most motivating things that bring people to a lecture. Number one, if somebody has a disease, how do they get rid of it? And number two, if somebody doesn't have a disease, how do they avoid getting one? These are the two main things that people will come to a health lecture to learn. If somebody has a disease, how do they get rid of it? If somebody doesn't have it, how do you avoid it? The problem is, how do you even know you have a disease? Or how do you know if what you're doing is working for you? This is the problem. I hear in the answer to that two of the most dangerous words in the English language. I feel. If you're waiting to determine how you feel to decide if what you're doing is working for you, chances are you're going to be in the latest state of the disease before you even know it. You see, there's only one disease in nature, there's only one disease in this world with many different stages. And as long as you take care of it at the beginning stages, you'll never have to worry about the end stages. But if you completely ignore it at the beginning stages, it's going to come back worse and worse and worse until finally it gets to the end stages. And then at that point, I told you how we think when we're at that point. Take care of it at the beginning stages. The problem is when it's at the beginning stages, what happens is people don't identify it. They don't know how because they're going by how they feel, and that's wrong. Because the body has amazing power to adapt to its diet and its environment and everything else. I know people that eat pizza and drink beer and feel great because their body's adjusted to what they do. My sister can smoke two packs of cigarettes a day and not cough at all. If I smoked one cigarette, I would, after a couple of puffs, I would stop coughing. If we were listening to our body, I would think she has strong lungs and I don't. See, the body has an amazing power to adapt, so we can't just go by how we feel. I know people that smoke crack and feel great when they're high. But what happens when that comes down? So there has to be other factors determined if what we're doing is working for us. And we're going to talk about those because those are essential to understand. Understand there's no one best way to eat for everyone. You know, the best foods for, for us, the best superfoods for us are the foods we need. Not the foods that somebody's selling and making popular. Not the candy junk foods. No, the foods we need. But we all don't need the same thing. Well, the way we tell what we need is the way we tell if what we're doing is working for us, which we're going to talk about. But before we do that, we first have to understand disease a little. There's many different stages, as I said. Now, the end stage of disease, no matter what you're suffering from, understand, as long as the body uh, is able to, it has the energy, you can be 
reverse the damage that's done. There's no medical test, no medical doctor in this world that can ever tell you that you have completely no energy left to rejuvenate yourself to start reversing things. Somebody came to me once and said, Paul, my doctor told me I have only six months to live. What should I do? I said, you better find another doctor. Because the only thing that doctor was using to determine how long you have to live was his track record. Every person that doctor is treated with that illness has only survived six months. That's not a very good track record. <laughs> you want to go to a doctor and say you have 80 or 90 years left to live. I see people on a daily basis through a Poverty Health Institute or through, through call me up through my website or email that have been diagnosed with a death, a death sentence by the doctors. But I also people see people who have overcome that as well. We can't, we don't let it get to that point, but even if you are at that point, understand there is still hope. Or if you know somebody that's at that point. But I'm concerned looking at the beginning signs, because if we look at the beginning signs, we never have to worry about the end signs. Nobody wakes up one day with the end stage of disease like cancer or something like that. What happens is we miss the beginning signs over and over again, and then it finally comes back worse, where we can't do anything about it or we decide not to do anything about it. But if you take care of the beginning, you don't have to worry about the end. The problem is we don't know how to identify the beginning signs of disease. That's the major issue. You know, people are going by how they feel, and that shouldn't be the way they're going. The two beginning signs of disease from a physical standpoint are very simple. Now, you might not realize this because so many people suffer from it and think it's normal, but the two signs are laziness and constipation. Laziness and constipation are the two beginning signs of disease. In fact, I know people that are so lazy, they're happy they're constipated, so they don't got to get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's how bad it's coming to the world. Now, some people try to deny that, but I don't listen to people that are full of something. Uh, thank you. Uh, but, but that's how bad it's become in today's world. You know, never look at what causes these beginning signs of disease. What causes it is overeating and undersleeping. You cannot do one without the other. Because when you eat more than our body needs, you're going to need more rest and sleep to recuperate from the cleansing that takes place from that. You know, so then we look at overeating being the major problem with everything. You say, why are we overeating? We're overeating because we eat low quality foods because we're eating bad quality food. People go, but I'm on a raw diet, but not everything raw is healthy. Even the fruits and vegetables you find in the average store that's even organic does not come from good soil anymore. If you truly want to be sure how to get the ideal foods, grow it yourself. People go, well, that's too difficult. It's too difficult to put water on some seeds. You're in trouble. You've got other issues in your diet if you can't do that. Oh, I don't have room to grow food. Then sprout food. Then grow sprouts. That's how you know. You've got to get the food from the good soil. You know, go to farmer's market instead of a health food store if you can. You know, compost your, your food that you're eating so it can replenish the soil and everything else. And if you watch the World Life Health Show, you know we don't let anything go to waste. We compost everything. So, so we have to understand about growing our own food. We have to understand about finding the highest quality foods out there. Sprouts are real easy to make in your kitchen, on your sink. You know, the higher the quality of food, the more satisfied we're going to be, and it's going to help us get what we need. Now, how do we determine we're getting what we need or if what we're doing is working for us? Well, here's how you know there's three ways. The first way is your sleep. Are you getting a good night's sleep? When you wake up in the morning, do you feel, feel well rested or are you so tired you feel like a truck hit you, you feel like you didn't get any sleep? You need to make sure you get good, consistently good sleep. You're not getting up in the middle of the night, not tossing and turning throughout the night. You go to sleep, you wake up, wow, I didn't even, I, I slept so well, I didn't even dream. In my dream, I was sleeping. <laughs> you know, you sleep so great, uh, you get up the next day and you feel great. That's the one way you tell you're doing well. Another way is your digestion. You should be going to the bathroom on a regular basis, and I don't mean once a week. You should be going to the bathroom every day. And then finally, the most important thing that most people lack doing, which we need to do, is monitor our chemistry through our blood work. Our blood work will tell us if what we're doing is working for us. If the food we're eating has the nutrients in it, if we're able to assimilate them. Because I don't care really if somebody wants to call themselves a raw vegan, if somebody wants to call themselves a raw foodist, if somebody wants to call themselves a cooked foodist, whatever they want to call themselves, if what you do is working for you, wonderful. But if it's not, and you keep trying to do the same thing and expect a different result, that's the definition of insanity. You must change what you're doing to change the result. But getting your blood work checked, and I'm not talking about going to the doctor and just getting your plain CBC blood test, a basic blood test, an extensive amount of blood work. That's what you need to do, and that'll tell you what's going on. Your hormones, your, your, your cancer tumors, your markers, and, and your, your nutrients, and everything, get it all done. 
Now, I have a doctor, Dr. Shandell in Florida, has a website called caprofile.net. www.ca